Let's level up your Android experience with these handy system level tweaks. And the best part, no need to root your device to follow along with this video. Picture this, you park your car and instead of manually needing to mark your spot on Google Maps, let a Tasker plugin handle it for you. It will recognize that you've disconnected from your car's Bluetooth speaker and will instantly save your parking spot. You'll then receive a notification with a handy map button tool for instant navigation. Plus, you can even attach a note or a snappy picture for a clearer memory of where you left your car. Trust me, the next time you're in a rush and can't spare a moment for Google Maps, your future self will thank you. It's also a breeze to set up this Tasker profile, and by the end of this video, I'll even guide you through the process. Remember the fantastic power menu in Android 11 that included all of your smart home controls? Thankfully, with another task plugin, you can bring some smart home controls back to the power menu. Even from your lock screen, you can toggle your lights or smart devices without needing to unlock your phone. Sure, they may not be the prettiest buttons, but they do the job and are always accessible when you need them. I won't sugarcoat it though. Enabling this Tasker profile is a lot more complicated than the others in this video, but once it's set up, it'll be so handy. And again, towards the end of the video, I'll even show you how to enable it. And that also goes for the rest of the Tasker profiles that I show off. And by the way, if you want me to make a full dedicated video going over the best Tasker profiles that can enhance your Android experience, be sure to drop a thumbs up. If this video reaches over 10,000 likes, I'll make it happen. Otherwise, stay tuned for more useful Android videos coming your way. Here's another cool Tasker trick. Whenever I receive a notification, the top edge of my status bar starts to glow in the same color as that app's notification icon. So if I get a text message, the top of my screen will glow blue. If it's an email, it'll be white, and so on and so forth. Plus, that glow will stay there until I either open it or dismiss the notification or a new one comes in. It's pretty convenient. I was also able to change my charging sound with Tasker. So now, anytime I plug in my phone, it plays this. Thank you. And upon disconnection, it plays this. Charger disconnected. But I can make it say whatever I want and even use a custom sound file when first importing this Tasker profile. When opening certain apps that are usually really loud, like TikTok or certain games, I now have them automatically mute, so if I open them in public, they won't disturb other people. Then when I close the app, my volume will revert back to normal. It's very handy. Okay, one more. If you have a foldable device like the Pixel Fold, you can use this Tasker profile called Fold Dual Launcher to open any third-party launcher on the outer screen, and when you switch to the larger inner screen, it seamlessly transitions to the stock Pixel Launcher or pretty much any other app you've designated. The switch is almost instantaneous too, making it feel like a needed feature of the phone. Now, besides using the Tasker app, there are plenty of other apps out there that can enhance the Android OS experience. One gem in particular is Shizu Tools, offering a treasure trove of useful features. Among them is Mixed Audio, which allows you to play audio from multiple apps simultaneously without pausing each other. For example, if I have a YouTube video playing in the background, maybe I'm listening to music, and then I open TikTok, the YouTube video won't get paused, and I can continue to play audio from both apps. There's also this other tool within Shizu Tools called Deep Loader, and as you can probably guess from the title, it lets you uninstall any system apps that you otherwise couldn't. You just select them and hit Confirm to Uninstall. However, exercise caution and only remove apps that you know aren't important, because if you accidentally remove a critical system app, your device could get into a boot loop. Additionally, disabling apps within Shizu Tools means you can't easily bring them back unless you reinstall them from the Play Store or the web. But don't worry, I'll soon share a pretty great alternative to address this issue. Shizu Tools also offers seamless app downgrades with APK files, the ability to execute raw ADB commands without a computer, and a few other nifty tricks. It's a really fantastic toolbox overall, the only catch is that you'll need an additional app called Shizuku to enable Shizu tools to function. Think of it as a bridge that facilitates interaction with the OS. Otherwise, most of these modifications would only be accessible if you rooted your device or manually entered ADB commands from a computer. I've created a video tutorial available in the YouTube cards demonstrating how to set up Shizuku really easily. Now, as great as it is to improve your smartphone OS, improving your mental health is a lot more important. And with BetterHelp, the sponsor of this video, 
you can receive the best online therapy at an affordable cost and from the comforts of your home. I've used therapy in the past to help improve my communication skills, lower my social anxiety, and just be a lot more confident in myself. I always used to find it difficult to speak to others because I was a pretty shy and timid person. But once I went to therapy, I learned about some new tools that I could use to help me break out of my shell a lot easier and get a better understanding of who I was as a person. And this helped me to be a lot more confident and not need to worry about other people's thoughts. If you're facing anything similar or have any other mental insecurities, BetterHelp can help you out and make it really easy to find the best therapist who understands you. Plus, signing up is very easy. You just answer a few questions on their site or app, and they'll help you find a therapist that's right for you. Plus, you can reach them in various ways, including through messaging, phone call, or video chat at your own time. And the best part is that if you're not finding your therapist to be a good fit, you can easily switch to another one at any time with no additional cost. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. You can use my personalized link at the top of the description or visit betterhelp.com slash howtomn to sign up. Anyways, back to some awesome mod-related apps. This one called AutoDND lets you automatically enable Do Not Disturb mode for any app you open, not just games. Once you close the app, Do Not Disturb mode turns back off. I personally applied this to the YouTube app, so I no longer get disturbed by unimportant notifications whenever I watch any videos. As promised, here's a better alternative to the debloater feature found within Shizu Tools. Kanta not only allows you to remove virtually any app you desire, but it also includes a restore feature, making it effortless to re-enable anything you've disabled. That way, you never have to worry about being unable to reinstall a system app that's not readily available on the web or the Play Store. Permissions on Android have undoubtedly seen significant improvement in terms of transparency and control. However, there's still room for improvement. For example, any app on your phone can read and modify your clipboard without your knowledge. They can also automatically access your phone's sensors without needing permission, display toast messages at will, and initiate weight locks to control the device's power state. And for some of these things, there's nothing within Android's permission manager to stop them. That's until now, because with App Ops, everything is brought to light, revealing every hidden permission that each app is utilizing, including those previously discussed. And the best part is that I can toggle any of these permissions off to stop them from getting access. If you're running Android 12 or higher, you can use Color Blender to modify the color palette of your OS even further. You can choose different Monet style palettes or select any custom color to follow. If you're rooted, you can even do a few extra things like forcing non-themed apps to become themed, changing the lightness and saturation of the background and accent color to get a much more stronger look, and even force the background to be pitch black instead of dark gray when you enable the system's dark mode. It's a really great way to personalize your OS even further. And I know some of you were probably using Repainter as an alternative, but the reason I don't like using that app is because most of its theming features are locked behind a paywall. Color Blender, on the other hand, is completely free and open source. On the hardware side, you can use Keymapper to remap your phone's buttons to launch different actions, even if your phone doesn't offer this feature by default. For instance, I've configured the volume up key to activate the digital assistant with a double click. And I can quickly mute the phone by double tapping the volume down key. Plus, I can even press the volume up followed by the volume down to instantly bring up the quick settings panel. However, these examples only scratch the surface of what Keymapper can do. With this tool, you can create custom sequences of button taps and choose from a wide range of actions, letting your creativity run wild. The only downside is that it's not guaranteed to work with every device, but it's still worth a shot. Audio is another important thing on your phone and Rootless James DSP is the best equalizer you can install. It doesn't matter if you use headphones or usually jam out through your phone's speakers, Rootless James DSP lets you adjust the audio settings any way you like, including the dynamic range, bass boost, soundstage wideness, and much more. It even supports Auto EQ, which lets you apply the headphone preset for your Bluetooth device. That way, you can make the sound as neutral as possible by canceling out the manufacturer's preset equalization. Unfortunately, some apps like Spotify and Chrome don't support Rootless James DSP because they block any internal audio captures, but it still works well with other apps like YouTube, YouTube Music, Deezer, Twitch, and much more. 
And of course, if I'm going to make a video about system level modifications, I need to include System UI Tuner. Most of you have probably heard about this one, but for the few who haven't, System UI Tuner has a huge library of tweaks to let you improve your OS. Like I can enable freeform multi windows, which lets me open any app, any floating window on top of my launcher. If your phone has an annoying safe audio warning, like on some Samsung phones, you can disable that. You can also change certain sounds for basic actions, such as locking or unlocking the phone, charging it wirelessly, getting an alert for low battery and more. For airplane mode, you can specify which radios you want to exempt or toggle off whenever you tap on that tile. If you're annoyed by heads up notifications, you can disable those. You can modify the status bar, like choosing which icon should appear, enabling the seconds next to the time, and even enabling a custom demo mode. That's just the tip of the iceberg though, there are so many more tweaks found within this app. However, that doesn't mean that every tweak works for every phone. Some of them are meant for older Android versions, others only work on some types of OEMs, and some just don't work at all anymore. Anyway, those are some of my favorite new tools that help me customize my Android on the system level. Now, as I promised at the beginning, let me show you how to get some of those tasker profiles working on your phone. For this demo, I'll use the first tasker profile I discussed, which lets you automatically save your parking locations. First, you need to download tasker from the Play Store. And upon opening it up, you'll need to go through the setup process and give it all the necessary permissions. From there, go to the Taskers profile page. I linked it right below the like button. Tap on import and it'll open up within the Tasker app. Select yes to import the data. If it's your first time using Tasker, it'll then ask you to enable a good amount of permissions. After doing that, it'll ask you to import it to a project. So hit new project and give it a name. It doesn't matter what it is. This next step is very important, so don't skip it. You need to select your car's Bluetooth speaker Finally, hit yes to enable the profile, tap on the check mark at the top, and if you don't see it at first, restart the app. Afterward, you should now see a new tab with that Tasker profile we just imported, and that's how you import and use a basic Tasker profile. Now, some Tasker profiles can get a bit more complicated to set up. For instance, they'll have you import some extra profiles, enable ADB commands, and even require you to download extra Tasker-related apps that will cost between $1 to $4 to get running. So just keep that in mind. One Tasker profile I wanted to go over is Smart Home Controls in the Power Menu because it is the most complicated profile to set up. And I don't want to leave you guys hanging in the dust here. So just be warned though that this will be a long tutorial, but it'll still be worth it in the end to get easy access to those home controls. Now before doing anything, you'll want to download Amazon Alexa from the Play Store and sign in. From there, you need to go to this website titled Android 12 Power Menu Controls, which I'll link right below the like button, and you need to import this profile to the Tasker app. It'll have you enable some ADB commands, or you can instead use the Tasker Permissions app, which lets you enable all of these with one click. Once you do that, you may need to re-import it since the startup menus have gone missing. So after you re-import it, you'll get a prompt asking if you want the controls to work only when the display is unlocked. So I would tap on no if you want them to work without needing to type in your password each time. From there, you may see another menu asking to allow Tasker to access all device logs. So tap on allow one time access. From there, go to the Task tab and select the first Power Menu icon action. Tap on Unknown Plugin. It'll have you download an extra app called Auto Voice. This is one of those apps I tried to tell you about that will require you to pay extra to get it to work. It's just a one-time fee of $3 for this one, so it's not too bad. Once you have it downloaded and pay for it or access the free trial and grant it any permissions it needs, go back to the Tasker app Select Auto Voice Trigger Alexa Routine. Tap on the pencil icon. It'll then ask you to enable an Auto Voice Smart Home skill within the Amazon Echo app, so make sure you do that. I already did it prior to this, so that's why it says it's not giving me the option to install it. From there, go back to the Tasker app. It may have you enable another permission. Then hit on Create New Device and name it to the task that you want it to do. 
I would even put the text tasker at the beginning to make it easier to find. In my case, I wanted to toggle on my small lamp in my office, so I'll name it tasker short office lamp. Once you do that, hit OK and go into the Amazon Echo app. Go to more, routines, tap on the plus icon in the top right corner. For the one section, tap on add an event. Choose smart home and scroll down until you see the tasker device you just created, which in my case is tasker short office lamp. Hit save. Then for the action, I wanted to turn on my lamp, so I hit on add an action, smart home, lights, and then look for the light that I want to turn on, which in my case is the office lamp. Hit next, then power, and ensure it's set to toggle on or off or whatever you'd like, and hit next again. Finally, hit save, and that routine will be created. Go back to the tasker app, hit the check mark, go back, and hit the lower left play icon to see if it worked. If it did, then your routine is connected. From there, go back to the main screen of Tasker and repeat the same steps for the rest of the power menu icon actions if you want to control four other smart home devices. Finally, within the Scenes tab, you can tap on Lights, and then you can change the icons. They're just using emojis in their place, so you can find something that matches your smart device location. Since I did my office lamp, I put an icon of a file cabinet. Finally, after doing all that, I hit the check mark at the top, if it asks for any more permissions, then I grant them, and now we should be good. Actually, not really, there's one more thing. I know, bear with me. Uh, you'll need to remap your power menu to your lock key. Otherwise, these icons will pop up when you launch your Google Assistant. So within your system settings, go to System, Gestures, press and hold Power button, and change it to the Power menu. Now, when you launch the Power menu, you should see these controls. And if you still want to bring up your digital assistant, you can use the Keymapper app to remap a double press of your volume keys to still be able to launch it. Or just say Google Assistant's hot word that rhymes with OK Frugal. One last thing, each time you restart your phone, these icons in the power menu will disappear because it's missing those device log permissions. So you'll need to go back into the Tasker app, switch to the Task page, tap on one of the power menu icon actions, go back, Tap on the check mark and allow it device locks. I know it's annoying, but it is what it is. Okay, now you're 100% finished, I promise. Anyways, tap this video to learn about more awesome Android mods that can actually help cancel out your monthly subscriptions and save you a bit of money. Also, remember 10,000 likes and I'll make a video showing off the best Tasker profiles. Thanks for sticking to the end and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!